those among you who are easily frightened, we suggest you turn away now. To those of you who think they can take it, we say, welcome to the madhouse. What's up, beautiful people, and welcome back to my channel. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to title this video because it's a mix of things. Some might be spooky, some not so much, but it's all in the realm of, I guess, spirits and death. So the first story I'm going to tell is something my mom has said before when I was a child. She said it several times, but it never quite clicked. And she said it again when we were watching Beetlejuice. So I'd gone to see Beetlejuice 2 in the movie theaters, liked it so much. And I decided to watch the first one. Guys, the first one is absolutely stupid. <laughs> I did not like the first one, it was ridiculous. But anyway, in the middle of watching the movie with my mom, she actually got up to leave. She was like, this movie is stupid, I just, I can't. <laughs> and I said, it's okay, I'm gonna finish it because I paid, was it $4.99 for it on YouTube? So I'm like, I'm gonna finish the movie. And you know when you pay for a movie on YouTube, they give you 48 hours to watch it. So I'm like, well, I'll finish it. Anyway, so we were watching the movie together and there was this scene where Winona Ryder's character, I forget what her name is in the movie, where the ghost couple haunting the house is trying to scare people in the house and they have like sheets on and she takes a picture of them and then they have no feet. So that's actually what triggered this conversation with my mom. My mom had said like when I was younger, she says in Ghana, cause my mom was born in Ghana, grew up in Ghana. She said in Ghana, if like a taxi driver is picking up a client or a passenger at night especially at night what they would do is like they have to pull forward first and look in your rear view mirror or the side mirror to see if the person you're about to get in your car if they can see that person's feet and if you can't see that person's feet well step on that gas and go <laughs> so that's what triggered that conversation because if you can't see the person's feet or you can't see a shadow then it's not a person you're not alive I've mentioned several times on this channel that I like dogs because my grandpa had dogs so I grew up with, with dogs. A lot of them were Labradors or German Shepherds and sometimes at night we would hear the dogs barking and it will switch. So the dogs will bark the way they normally bark when there's like a stranger around but then it will switch over to a howl like woo. And my mom used to always just say like, you're not barking at a human. Like when they switch over and you're howling, that's not a human you're barking at. I would really like to have a dog whenever I have a house. I just can't have a dog down, obviously, because they need to be walked. You need to have a backyard for them to run around. But animals sense things that we cannot. They usually sense things before we do. So I used to watch this show on Animal Planet, they used to have great shows on Animal Planet, they don't anymore. There's one show called The Haunted, where people tell stories of moving into a house or like your house being haunted or something. And one of the stories I do remember clearly, the lady had a dog and she said the dog would be barking at the wall. And then the one day she was in the house with the dog and she wanted to get up from her bed, she was laying down and the dog laid on her, wouldn't let her get up. The next day. So another story I remember was that of Kosh Kosh, which I learned about when I was in boarding school. So I went to an all girls Catholic boarding school prior to coming to the US. I was there for three years and I learned a lot of strange things while I was on campus. So typically in Cameroonian and Ghanaian culture, I feel like the rest of Africa is the same way, but I don't want to generalize. Specifically in Ghanaian and Cameroonian culture, we do not bury people with shoes on, just socks. I mean, it's really impractical because the person is not going to be needing to walk anywhere. So socks will suffice. And I remember seeing pictures of my grandfather on my mom's side when he had died and he was laid in his bed for the viewing in the village. He had just socks on. There's no need for shoes. Which is why I was quite surprised to see that during Aretha Franklin's funeral, she had shoes on in her casket. Anyway, maybe because she was a diva, that was her request. But when I was in boarding school, there was this story about Kosh Kosh. So I don't know if it was from our school specifically or from the neighboring boarding school, but there was this story that in someone's dorm, they would hear the sound of heels on your cement every night. You know, Kosh Kosh, Kosh Kosh, like that. 
All right, this is take two of this story because I actually asked my mom yesterday what happened because I remember her telling me the story when I was younger, but I didn't remember the details. So in Cameroon, we call it Kosh Kosh. I'm not sure what they call it in Ghana because this thing actually happened in Ghana, according to my mom, in Accra Girls High School. She said this when she was younger. She didn't actually attend that school, but she had heard of the story from friends. Who attended she said there was a lady who used to teach there and she had surgery for some reason and the surgeons or whoever did the surgery left an instrument in her stomach guys so my mom says that they were still able to retrieve that instrument but she died from that i guess that caused some sort of infection or whatever so she died from those injuries imagine going to get surgery and you die because somebody was so careless and left an instrument in your body so they said she was buried with heels on and because she used to work in that school she would haunt the school they said the girls in the dorm would hear the noise of her heels on the cement and it would go kosh 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 so they would hear her coming from a distance and the girls would be so scared every night they would have to hold your beds together in the dorm because they were so scared they didn't want to like be sleeping separately so they would pull your beds together and from what my mom was telling me like they had to come in exercise the place and she says she's not sure if they had to close down the place because of that but that's the story i told the story yesterday but i i was forgetting where it happened and what happened to the person for them to be haunting the place and all i i i missed all those details so i did ask her and she clarified for me and so i think that might be the reason why Ghanaians don't bury people with shoes it's also the same in Cameroon, I believe. I don't know about the rest of Africa, but I'm willing to bet that the vast majority of African countries do not bury the dead with shoes on. We just use socks. This next one isn't really a spooky story. It's more of a mystery. Something happened to someone on campus. And so today we don't know what happened to her, but we were all freaked out. I mean, it was different stories, like people saying that she fell on the floor from her top bunk and hit like something but all i know is she was bleeding and so they had to take her to the hospital obviously and then when she came back she had a permanent like mark on her forehead and like i said people in her dorm couldn't even say what really happened to her it was a lot of like rumors i was scared to ask her and we had gone to elementary school together and ended up in the same boarding school for a secondary school we were young at the time so there's gonna be a tendency to be superstitious and think something else happened but she quite literally could have just fallen and just hit her head and i think that will do it for spooky stories i can't really think of anything else so that's all i have for this video hope you enjoyed also in case you have noticed this i apparently i'm allergic to some fabrics or like some fabrics irritate my skin so i broke out in hives the other day we were giving shirts at work and they came in plastics and i made the mistake of wearing that shirt without washing it i should have even though it came in a plastic and this has happened before when i was in florida when i ordered something online and made the mistake again of not washing it and i broke out like at the time i didn't know it was the clothing that made me break out i thought maybe it was something i ate but now in hindsight is the clothing and it just happened again last week broke out in hives all over my neck all over my chest area stomach pretty bad so i have to like stop by cvs and pick up some benadryl <laughs> on my way to work so yeah just in case you're wondering yeah i also like when i go to the doctor have to do like an allergy test to see like what things irritate my skin i didn't know i had any allergies i know i have delicate skin but i didn't realize it was to this extent but yeah in case you see that it's just hives and yeah that's all i have for today i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one